A phospholipid is really structurally similar to a triacylglycerol. It's a molecule that is found exclusively in cell membranes in both plants and animals. There are two main types of phospholipids. One is called the phosphoacylglycerol and the other is called a sphingomyelin. I'm going to begin by drawing like our, you know, block diagram sort of a representation of the phosphoacylglycerol. So we're starting with phosphoacylglycerols. Just like I said that they are like a, a triacylglycerol, and in that regard, they have the same glycerol backbone. Uh, and they also will have the fatty acids coming off of the side, but a phosphoacylglycerol is only going to have two fatty acids instead of having three. And I'm just abbreviating the fatty acid FA. Uh, just like a triacylglycerol, these could be any two fatty acids. It doesn't matter what they are. So instead of having a third fatty acid, the phospholipid has a phosphate group. The phosphate group does not align itself with the fatty acids like we see in a triacylglycerol. Instead, it actually points in the opposite direction. So it's sticking out on this side. And this has to do with the polarity of these groups. The fatty acid groups are very nonpolar, so they stay together on this side of the molecule. And the phosphate group is very polar, so it's repelled by those fatty acids and it ends up uh, on the other side of the molecule. So I have to concentrate to write phosphate. It's a tricky word, phosphate. The phosphate group is followed by another group that we call an amino alcohol. So there's actually two groups on this end over here, amino alcohol. And so because, um, because the phospholipid, the phosphoacylglycerol, has one of its tails in one direction and the other, tails, the other tail in the other direction, a lot of times we will represent this molecule um, as being kind of like, like this with squiggly lines for the tails. And this would be the polar portion of the molecule. The polar portion of the molecule is this side right here. And then these little squiggly tails, these are the nonpolar tails of the molecule. Those would be the two fatty acid chains. Sometimes also the molecule is represented with a circle instead of that rectangle for the polar part. And so this would be, these two are both representing the same thing, the circle being used to represent the polar portion of the molecule with the two nonpolar fatty acid tails. There are, there are a lot of different types of phosphoacylglycerols because you can vary the fatty acids on the molecule, so it gives you many different options. In addition to that, there are two different types of amino alcohols that we see on a phosphoacylglycerol, and that gives us, in general, like two, two classes of phosphoacylglycerols. One type of phosphoacylglycerol is called a lecithin. And in a lecithin, um, the amino alcohol group is, actually, I'm just going to draw it because it's kind of hard to describe. So it's a methyl on a nitrogen with two more methyls attached. And that is followed by a couple of CH2 groups. This is the amino alcohol portion of the molecule. I'm going to go ahead and draw the phosphate. So the phosphate is an oxygen followed by a phosphorus that's got a couple more oxygens on it fourth oxygen on it. And then this brings us to the glycerol backbone for the molecule, which is what I'm drawing right now. And then these are going to be the fatty acid portions of the molecule, just kind of like we're used to seeing. So um, this molecule is a type of a phosphoacylglycerol called a lecithin. And what makes it a lecithin is this portion of the molecule, the amino alcohol. So maybe I'll just kind of highlight um, that portion of the molecule. This is the part that makes us choose to call it a lecithin. And there are many different types of lecithins because you can vary the, out, the R groups on the fatty acids. The other type of phosphoacylglycerol is called a cephalin. And the only difference between a lecithin and a cephalin is this portion of the molecule right here. That's the only way that they're different. So I'm going to try to take a shortcut here and just copy and paste this whole entire molecule. And then I'm gonna change it up to make it a cephalin instead of a lecithin. 
So for acephalin out here, we're going to have the CH2 groups. I didn't need to erase all of those. And then on the nitrogen, instead of having three methyl groups, there are three hydrogens. Still a positive charge on it. Um, and sometimes you will see notated those positive and negative charges on these phosphoacylglycerols, the positive charge on the nitrogen and the negative charge on the oxygen. Sometimes you'll see notation that indicates these charges are present on the molecule at physiological pH. So it's just a fancy way of referring to the pH that's inside the body. So again, this is, these, are, these are both types of phosphoacylglycerols. This is the generic structure of a phosphoacylglycerol. This is an even more generic structure. And phosphoacylglycerols are a type of a molecule that we call a phospholipid. The other type of phospholipid is a sphingomyelin. A sphingomyelin is also a phospholipid that is used in um, cell membrane, but these are, sphingomyelins are exclusively found in the membranes of nerve cells. Now, sphingomyelins are actually structurally quite different from phosphoacylglycerols and triacylglycerols. Instead of having a normal glycerol backbone, they have one that's shaped kind of like an upside down L, like this. And this backbone is a molecule called a sphingosine, which is a little bit tricky to write. Sphingosine. And because of this bulky portion of the sphingosine background, backbone, there's only room for two more pieces on this molecule right here. And neither one of them are going to be fatty acids. One of them is an amide. An amide structurally is really similar to a fatty acid. And in fact, instead of just writing amide, I think I'm going to just draw that functional group. So it's going to be a nitrogen with a carbon double bonded to an oxygen, and then it's going to have some sort of um, hydrocarbon tail. So it's really similar to what we would see in a triacylglycerol. Instead of having an oxygen here, there's a nitrogen instead, and that nitrogen needs hydrogen on it. It needs one more bond. Now the last portion on this, actually shouldn't have drawn it this way, the last portion on this is um, just the same as what we see in the uh, phosphoacylglycerols. So it is the phosphate group and the phosphate group is followed by the amino alcohol. And just like the phosphoacylglycerols, there are two types of amino alcohols that we can see. And also just like the phosphoacylglycerols, this portion of the molecule is polar. So actually, I really shouldn't have drawn it this way. It belongs on the other side of the molecule like this. So I'm going to rearrange this. So just like we see with the um, phosphoacylglycerols, these two groups are pointing on, in the other direction which gives us the um, same type of representation, a head with a little, a head with a, a couple of little nonpolar tails. And this again is the polar portion of the molecule, and this is the nonpolar portion of the molecule. And as I had said, the amino alcohol in a sphingomyelin can vary. You could have either one of the amino alcohols that we see in lecithin and cephalin. So this would be the same two amino alcohols as in a phosphoacylglycerol.